from 3,370 meters above sea level at Alto de la Cuchilla in Colombia. Welcome to the GCN Show. Welcome to the GCN Show. This week, cycling's weirdest laws from around the world. Are you in danger of breaking them? We are also edging ever closer to cycling's equivalent of the sub two hour marathon. We have bicycle license plates over in California. We've got some surfing for you. And we look at research from Molecular Diversity Preservation International. Ooh, plus Dan's doing a 1,000 kilometer bike ride. No, I'm not. <laughs> This week in the world of cycling, we learned that pro cyclist Thomas de Ghent is actually just like the rest of us. I, a normal person, even though he's a top pro cyclist, he's still not allowed in his own house if he's too dirty. He's not. In fact, here he is getting jet washed after his ride before he was allowed to go indoors. We also learned this week that the UCI rules aren't perhaps quite as much of a restriction on bike development as we first thought. British Cycling's collaboration with Lotus and Hope has yielded this. Wow. What are we thinking about that then? Hot or not? Hot? Well, I mean, quite clearly it's not hot, hot, is it? But Thanks, you know, Si, for clearing that up. Well, you know what I mean? I mean, it, it's ugly, really ugly. It's like a bike had a night of passion with a Zimmer frame, but it's still very, very cool. And also, all because the UCI relaxed their aspect tube width ratio thing. Well, let's hope they don't relax that rule too much more than well, they already did. Yes, exactly. Uh, now, before we get on some very strange cycling laws from around the world, if you were disappointed not to see me or Si on the show last week. Yeah, all two of you. Yeah, or perhaps uh, wondering where we were last week. We had to go into hiding, didn't we? Yeah. Because it turned out we had made tens of thousands of mountain bikers really angry. That is I mean, all we did was suggest that modern mountain bikes are boring. Yeah. We would like to just reiterate the end of the video where we do say that we don't think that modern mountain bikes are actually boring, even though they have changed fundamentally. Uh, we would now though like to add something to that video, which is to say that a lot of mountain bikers don't really have a sense of humour, Dan. Is these two guys don't know how to ride flat bars. I reckon we should beat them up. No, they don't. We're going to continue digging yes. on this one. Turns out they take themselves way too seriously. Yeah, That's being right, extreme and apparently relaxed is clearly a serious yeah. business. Whereas roadies, I mean, slightly ironically, given how much we obsess about wattages and aerodynamics, yeah. we've had to develop a sense of humour, haven't we? Because we have to wear lycra. True. Right, let's talk about cycling laws there. Now, we've been thinking about this uh, following uh, a video we've been researching about the legality of cycling side by side. Yeah. Which is legal, by the way, in Australia and the UK. Yeah, and 39 US states. Uh, whatever you do, don't mess with Hawaii, okay? No, uh, you are allowed to ride side by side in Texas, Si, but with the caveat that you do have to use your common sense there. Yeah, well, I guess you should probably use that whenever yeah. you ride. You do have to be careful in Dallas. Though, I found oh, out. What happens in Dallas? Because in Dallas, it is illegal to take your bike into any public building for really? some reason. Oh, right, Australia now, a uh, much publicised law about mandatory helmet use uh, when cycling, but, well, com controversial, we've got to say, but we'll leave that there. Worse for me, mate, is the fact that you've got to have a bell on your bike. Mm. Well, when we found that out, it did explain why we get so many submissions of Pimp My Bells over on Hack forward slash Bodge yeah. of the Week. In fact, we had a classic uploaded to the GCN app very recently, didn't we? It Check is. this out. Well, it does resemble a saddle a little bit, I guess. Doesn't yeah, it? or a fish, I think. Yeah. Uh, sticking in Australia, actually, there's also a law there that cyclists are not allowed to lead an animal, which means no taking your pooch out for a gentle bike ride stroll in the evening. Wow. Uh, there is a law in many countries, actually, that stipulates that you have to have reflectors on your bike, both front and rear. Fortunately, this one doesn't seem to be particularly well enforced, I guess because there's this tacit understanding that traditional reflectors are just a bit rubbish. But here in the UK, there's also a law that says you have to have pedal reflectors when cycling at night. Is there? Yeah. Well, that would pose a problem if you were running speed plays, wouldn't it? Well, or any clippers pedals. I haven't got adapters for my looks. Mm. Meanwhile, over in Colorado, and in fact in Australia, which we've just found out, uh, you have to have one hand on your handlebar at least at all times. 
which wouldn't pose a big problem for you or I, so no. would it? But it would be blooming annoying if you were a rider capable of winning a bike race. Yeah, that's it. Another one that's not going to pose much of a problem to us, but it turns out that in Connecticut, there is a cycling speed limit. Do you want to have a guess as to what it is? 30 miles an hour. No, not even close. 65 miles an hour. Well, who's going to be breaking that? Well, I don't know. That's quite swift if you ask me. It's, there's not even many mountains around that neck of the woods. No, there are not. Uh, a law here in the UK that bans furious cycling. So all those mountain bikers that have been commenting on our videos <laughs> yeah, better watch, watch out. out. Uh, and Thailand as well. According to Bike Radar, uh, it's illegal to cycle without a shirt on. Mm. Well, so, that yeah. would be disappointing for the locals if we ever turn up, won't it? Sorry. Yeah, but imagine Mary Cipollini wouldn't be allowed to go there either. No, very true indeed. Uh, right, let's finish with a law that was proposed over in Missouri. That proposal was that every cyclist had to ride around with a fluorescent yellow flag on oh, their bike. Yeah. On top of a 15-foot flagpole. Bloody hell! Yeah, can you believe that? No! Thankfully, that law wasn't passed. No! Although, imagine the tech opportunities. Imagine aerodynamic 15-foot flagpoles. Mm. I, could, I can pretty much hear Ollie squealing with excitement as, as we talk. And they may not have stipulated the size of the flag. It could be a little miniature thing on top of that 15-foot <laughs> pole, couldn't it? If you were going to propose a cycling law for the UK or anywhere in the world, what would it be? Uh, I would ban bad vibes on bike paths. Okay, nothing upsets yeah, me man. more on a on a bike path, no seriously, uh, than when cyclists are aggressive towards one another. Like, I can kind of understand when you're riding on the road, you might feel a bit threatened, and so you're particularly assertive, borderline aggressive, mm. but on a bike path, there is no room for that kind of attitude. Leave it on the road, please. You obviously feel passionate about that. I you? do, it really annoys me when cyclists get angry at other cyclists. Well, I would ban- Or worse, with pedestrians. Pff, that really annoys me. Can I get mine in? Yeah. All right, I would ban boring mountain bikers. <laughs> oh! Sorry. All mountain bikers then. Whoa. Oh, no, we just. <laughs> the comments are gonna go wild. Martin, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Gravel bikes are mountain bikes with <laughs> handlebars. <laughs> Triathletes and mountain bikers all hate us right now. I uh, know, you know that law over in the US uh, where if you're driving and there's a red light, you're allowed to turn right as long as there's nothing coming from the left or in front of yes. you? Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, I would do that in the UK for cyclists, obviously turning left if it's a red light and there's nothing coming. Well, worldwide, mate. Why not? Yeah, I think that's a great idea. I think that is a great Wasn't idea. Wasn't mine. Uh, Stefan just thought up of that behind yeah, the camera. Thanks, I thought Stefan. it was a great idea. Yeah. Anyway, make sure you all let us know in the comment section. Firstly, what weird cycling laws do we need to know about so we don't fall foul of them when we're out travelling around? And also, if you could create your own cycling laws, what would they be? Make sure you stick them in the comment section. Now, though, we're going to head up to London and travel back in time to Friday night because Hank was there, a guest of Wahoo and Brewdog for the ultimate Friday night out. He went to a brewery? Uh, no, just a pub, mate, don't worry. That's all right, what? <laughs> I don't think Dan knew about that. Thanks guys, I've made it here to London where I'm attending the Wahoo Zwift Tour, which is known as Crank It Up. They've been to six different countries, they've got five more to go, and I'm here at the Seven Dials Brewdog Bar. So to be honest, Lloydy, you, my friend, are missing out. Right, I'm going to get involved. You, you coming? You coming? <laughs> Made it to this. The atmosphere is absolutely booming here, full of cyclists, free brew dog beer, and there's a Wahoo kicker up for grabs. You just have to do a hill climb. Yeah, about that. I might have to do it. Shoot. I'm having an amazing night here. But the question I'm asking is, is this the ultimate night out for a cyclist? I'm gonna go and find out. Finally, I found Jason and luckily he's sweatier than I am. So we're good there. How are you finding the event, bud? It's great, but I still hate hills, even if they're thick. And is this the ultimate night out for a cyclist? Beer, beer and hill climbs. Yes. <laughs> yeah, nothing, nothing quite like it actually. Free beer and cycling. Sorry? Yeah, all lemonade, yeah. <laughs> My job has changed from being presenter to beer holder. There you go. <laughs> Very good butler, B. I found myself in the middle of the mosh pit. I think it's my turn to have a go on the hill climb. Not sure how I'm going to get on, though. Three, two, one. Let's make some noise. Up, 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 up. Oh, 
I'm not going to lie. Hill climbs are never easy. And with a pint under you, they're even harder. Right, Lloydy, you're here next time. Woo! Oh, what a night. I've only just realised I've been drinking alcohol-free beer. But it's been an absolute cracking night. Got hill climbing. Didn't do too well. But there's always next time. Right, now I'm going to hit Harry Potter land. Oh, I'm just waiting. I'm sure they're going to open in a minute. How much is it, mate? Four to... Do you reckon I could put it on expenses? Dad just made me a cup of tea whilst James was doing that. Thank you, mate. Well, that is the sort of generous person I am, Si. All bribery, as you will find out shortly. Mm. It is now time for your weekly GCN inspiration, which is where you submit your inspirational photos or videos. I've had videos for a little while. There we have. Have we? Uh, in return for potentially winning one of three prizes. That's right. This week, third place is a much coveted GCN Keep Cup. Yep. Oh, yeah. Second place will get you a three month free subscription to the GCN Club. And on top of that, GCN Sock 18, which you can see behind us there. Oh, I like that, it's one of my personal favorites. Uh, and then first prize, firstly, it's a copy of our new book, The Plant-Based Cyclist, which is very exciting. Yeah, first place is basically a bundle this week, isn't it? Yeah. Because you also get a GCN logo hoodie. Woohoo! The okay. classic, and then also, a striped t-shirt, which I'm particularly fond of. Yeah. All of which are available at shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com. Right, let's move on. Uh, in third place this week and receiving the Keep Cup is Mike uh, from Mohonk Preserve uh, in Gardner over in the USA. Uh, new bike day ride in my backyard. And yes, I know the cranks aren't level. I think we can forgive him because his chain stays aren't level either. No. There's no way you're going to get around that. No, I've not seen chain stays raised like that before. Well, it's a new allied, Dan. Just now you mention it. <laughs> uh, I think that's a very I nice did, photo. I did the GCN Tech Clinic last week. <laughs> You were swiftly yeah. covered over the uh, asymmetric yeah. chain stays, didn't you? Went down well, got a lot of likes. Got a load of dislikes as well. <laughs> right, anyway, I think that's a great photo. I think there's a lot of autumnal slash fall colours going on at the moment, and uh, and I'm a sucker for it. Yeah. I love a bit well, of red. We? So we should probably move on to second, because that's exactly what we've got there. <laughs> that's right. Uh, this is from Colin Fielder, uh, who was out for a ride with his wife on the local trail. Look at that! Woof! Do you reckon there's been any filters put on that one? I don't know, I hope not, because that is insanely amazing. It pops. It, it really does pop. Yeah, yeah I, uh, I, well, I just... Yeah, let us know if you've messed about with it. But regardless, <laughs> it, it looks great, that phone, doesn't it? Yeah. Anyway, receiving the bundle as the winner of first prize this week is... Gwyntha over in Lower Austria. Beautiful Sunday morning ride before breakfast. Lovely riding through the hills and woods of the Wienerwald. Uh, the Gunter, can you let us know whether Wiener war World translates literally as Sausage World? Uh, because, um, well, it, it sounds like it does. A Wiener World? Well, let's not focus too much on where it was and just look at that photo, Si. That's funny. That's exactly one of those days where you just know that the mist is going to lift. And it's yeah. going to be a beautiful, sunny autumn ride. That does look amazing, doesn't it? Mm. And the most inspirational thing about that, Dan, is that that wouldn't look vastly dissimilar in the, the depths of winter either. So that kind of makes me yeah. quite hopeful for the next few months. Is that a sneaky little stick holding the bike up? Well, somebody's got to be keeping it upright, isn't it? Yeah, otherwise he did a very well-timed photo. Yeah, anyway, a worthy winner, Gunther. That yeah. is fantastic. Uh, and please keep your uh, inspirational photos coming in. Yeah, well, actually, a reminder that you can now do that by submitting them on the GCN app, which is, in fact, where we got all of our winners from this week, isn't That's it? That's right, yeah. Uh, your inspirational photo on the app kind of uh, kind of backfired a little bit on you, didn't it? Backfired, yeah. I've I didn't really think that through. No, I don't well. think you did. You, Although I wasn't expecting it to be promoted quite so much on the GCN show last week. Well, for context, uh, if you didn't see it, uh, Dan basically put a post up and said he will ride a kilometre for every like that the post gets. And uh, your ride's going to be pretty long now, isn't well, it? Well, I mean, in my head, I couldn't imagine that we would have had more than, let's say, 100 or 150 app users. But uh, as it turns out, we've got at least a thousand. Yeah, so Dan's got a 1,000 and something kilometre bike ride coming right up. Mm, uh, no, because thankfully I didn't say uh, a time span for the said kilometres, so I can do it all. Well, I'll do all of those in 2020. No, mate, no, you are not getting out of it that easily. I propose, let me give this some thought, that this perhaps could be your December challenge. So you have to do it 
during Advent, from the 1st of December right through to Christmas Eve, you have to cover off all of those kilometres. And That's not too bad. the clock will keep ticking. So if you want to download the app and start liking Dan's post, then uh, there's still time to oh, make no, him ride further. Doing, yeah. Oh yes, absolutely, no, no, that's no, the no. rules. That's the rules, it's a done deal. No, wait. It's now time for cycling shorts. Cycling shorts now, and we will start with the news that Filippo Ganna has just smashed the individual pursuit world record, which now stands at just four minutes and 2.486 seconds, which is utterly bonkers. And if we need to state the obvious, that's averaging just under 60 kilometers per hour on your own from a standing start. Yeah. Even when you go downhill at 60k now, it feels really, really quick. Yeah, it, it does. Uh, as you can imagine, aerodynamicist guru Xavier Disley was keeping a very close eye on Ghana's performances over in Minsk. Uh, and afterwards, he came up with his traditional charts, which document his lap-by-lap -lap times. And it turns out he also did a negative split. So basically, he got faster and faster and faster until I think just the last lap he slowed slightly. Yeah, and he peaked at what, 62 point something kilometers per hour? In qualifying, 62.7, yeah. Yeah, now bear in mind that uh, the four rider team pursuit didn't go as fast as that until what, 20 something years 1993, ago? 1993. It really does put it into perspective. It does, it? yeah. We also asked Xavier whether he thought that these improvements in the individual pursuit time were solely down to improved aerodynamics. And he actually said, no, uh, power outputs amongst modern riders are also improving due to modern training methods. That is good to know, isn't it? Because you wouldn't want like an aerodynamics arms race being the only reason That's for true. it. Uh, we did, of course, then ask what it would take to go sub four minutes. And apparently, 20 watts or a 5% reduction in drag if the conditions were the same as in Minsk at the weekend, but in more favorable conditions, i.e. lower air density or something, it would take just five extra watts Whoa. to break four minutes. And let's face it, you can always squeeze out five extra <laughs> watts, can't you? Just yeah. try a little bit harder. It's only two seconds, isn't it, for well, Yeah. This is the mythical four minute barrier that became mythical about two weeks ago, wasn't it? After yeah. the sub two hour marathon. If only we'd been making a thing about it for years, but no, we're <laughs> just a little bit late on the party. It does make you wonder though, whether this is going to be broken before the end of this track season. I'd think it probably would be. Don't you? Yeah, like I said, it's only two seconds. Yeah, exactly. Go Filippo. <laughs> uh, now, in other news, uh, you are now able to use your Canyon bike officially on an indoor trainer. Yes, from one type of indoor cycling to another. And this one might sound strange because loads of us have already been using Canyons on indoor trainers. And in fact, Canyon have a pro indoor cycling team. But as with many, many other brands out there, the particular stresses that indoor trainers may or may not have been placing on frames hadn't been fully tested. And therefore, using your bike on an indoor trainer meant that it wasn't fully covered by warranty. But Canyon obviously realised how many of us do want to use their bikes on an indoor train without fear of any consequences. And so they have increased the scope of their standard quality testing processes. Yeah, basically what that means is that six models have now been cleared for use on indoor trainers with a warranty. Sticking with indoor riding, Zwift have said that they are going to donate $25,000 to the charity Movember if users are able to complete an in-game mission. That's right, the mission for Zwift being to get 10,000 users to complete either riding or running 9.9 .9 hours in game in November. So if you want to get involved in this and anytime you get on Zwift, it will count. You just got to sign up in game and then ride away. Or run, in fact, if you really want. It's a shame it doesn't coincide with my festive thousand, really, Si, isn't it? Well, yeah, but nine and a half hours, mate. It's just gonna be a just a tiny fraction of that 1,000 yeah. and something kilometers. Yeah, probably about 100 kilometers. Right, Dan, is it time for some cycling themed science? That depends. What's the journal? It is the Molecular Diversity Preservation International. One of my favorites, crack on. Well, thank you, Dan. Uh, now this one, as ever, comes from a tweet via Cycling Science. And the journal article is about the effects of fluid intake in a one hour cycling time trial performance undertaken by trained endurance athletes. The conclusion, Dan, best not to drink at all. I know, I was really surprised about that conclusion. Because yeah. if you're in a hot time trial, surely you want to drink something. Yeah. But the laboratory conditions for the nine participants were reasonably hot at 30 degrees centigrade. And as you said, the conclusion was basically that a pre-planned hydration strategy or a drink to thirst strategy was no better than drinking nothing at all. 
I just can't get my head around this. You can't go for an hour without drinking, no matter what, can you? So there we go. Uh, now, from one hour activities to another one hour activity, and the cyclocross season is gathering pace. For many people, it's gathering pace because Mathieu van der Poel made his return at the Super Prestige in Rue de Vorda. He didn't make it look quite as easy as normal. I mean, it took until mid-race to dispatch all of his competitors, uh, but he still had enough in the tank left at the end for this. Do you know what that's called? What, the jump? Yeah. No, what? Steez. Ah, style with ease. Easy. A mountain yes. biker without a sense of humour told me that <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> anyway, uh, Jeremy caught up with Matthew Van der Poel before he embarked on his race. I'm here with Matthew Van der Poel. How are you feeling today, man? Uh, for now, I'm feeling quite good. So <laughs> it's uh, really nice weather here uh, today, and um, yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, it's your first race back. Obviously, you have not raced against Eli Yusubi or Tom Pidcock. They've been showing that they've got great form coming up. Excited, nervous, probably both. Yeah, not really nervous. It's because it's something I do for a long time now, so it's a, it's a habit, and uh, yeah, I'm I'm a little bit curious how uh, the guys are doing, and um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. You're ready to rip, and uh, this course in particular, do you like it? Is it something that favors you? Yeah, it's one of my favorites, uh, especially in this in these conditions, and um, yeah, I hope uh, I'll find the, the good pace today and uh, have a good technique. By the way, if you haven't already heard, we now have a cycling podcast dedicated to cyclocross, which is out at the moment every single week. Uh, Jeremy is at the helm. There's some great stuff going on there, including weekly contributions from three-time former world champion, Erwin Vivekan. I know, how cool is that, Erwin Vivekan? Yep. There we go. Uh, and Ollie, undoubtedly, will be guesting on there soon after his so, yeah. yeah after his performance uh, at the weekend in, um, in the video. <laughs> Ollie's definitely got a good sense of humour, hasn't he? He does, yeah, yeah he just has as to well. Have with skills like that on a slightly cross bike. That was so funny, that video. <laughs> what the f is that? Uh, right, moving on, thanks to all of you who've pre-ordered our first ever GCN book entitled The Plant-Based Cyclist. It's been quite overwhelmed by the response, actually. Yeah, we yeah. have, yeah, it's been brilliant. But it is a great book because mainly it features loads of pictures of me and Sai eating. Yeah. What a great that, day, didn't we? Wasn't that fantastic? Here, eat this. Yeah, all right, brilliant. Here, eat that. Oh, yeah, fantastic. Although I lucked out more than you, didn't I? Because whilst you just had a load of snacks to eat, uh, I ended up with the post-ride meal and the dessert. You did, yes. Uh, that video will be coming soon. Yeah, we've got two more recipe videos with Nigel coming soon. Uh, if you haven't found out much about the Plant Based Cyclist book, uh, then uh, do make sure you have a look over on the GCN shop. Nigel is a bit of a legend and he's been working in cycling as a top nutritionist for a long, long time now, hasn't he? He knows his onions. Right, before we finish cycling shorts, uh, we are going to let some lucky winners know. Oh, yes. Uh, who they are, basically. This is the Continental Tire giveaway. That's right. So uh, we have Conrad Whiston, uh, who has requested clincher tires. We've got William, William? William Cumberledge. Sorry, William Cumberledge. What a surprise. I've messed up uh, two names on the bounce. And uh, he's requested tubeless GP5000s. And then lastly, Sven Lang. Uh, who's also after some tubeless GP 5000s. Uh, you got the foreign one right. I know, weird that, isn't it? Yeah. Well done to all of you. We'll get those prizes out to you in the post as soon as possible. <laughs> Next up, hack forward slash bodge of the week. And this segment also, you can upload your hacks and bodges via the GCN app. Well, the first one actually I noticed over on Twitter. So I wrote to Mark Ooh, Scott and nice. asked him to send me uh, the original photo. He carved this pumpkin. Which is neither a hack nor a bodge. It's it's a pumpkin, isn't it? Yeah. With a bike he's carved hacked in. The pumpkin. Hasn't oh, he? I see what you mean. Yes, no, he has hacked away at the pumpkin. Yeah, no, Impressive, I like that. Well done, mate. It? It's better than the smile and the two eyes that I did. I did a smile and two eyes as well, but I did make the pumpkin seeds into teeth, which I was particularly proud of. Well, Lorraine made the pumpkin seeds, my wife, into like a sort of spew coming out of her mouth. <laughs> did she? Yeah. Oh, that was fantastic. Show me a picture later. <laughs> <laughs> we will do. Anyway, moving on. Yeah, moving on to this one from uh, Matthias from Germany. Uh, oh, I like this one, mate. So this uh, is all about that pesky off-center light. This time of year, you've got lights on your bike. How annoying is it to have it on one side of your handlebars? Matthias has fitted this one underneath his Garmin mount. Uh, but to do so, he has to dismantle his girlfriend's headlamp, which ah. he apologizes for here. 
Oh dear. I actually bought uh, a uh, GoPro mount attachment for my light uh, off the internet the other day. And well, I'm very excited to be using that soon. Uh, off the online shop side. It was, it was it? an online shop. Yeah, it was, yeah. <laughs> right, moving on. We had this sent in by Evan in Australia. Uh, recently bought a Cannondale that came with Vision Metron handlebars. Uh, as these are flat, he was unable to clip on his aero bars. So rather than pay a lot of money to get some new compatible aero bars, he designed a new component which allows existing ones to fit on his bike. Wow. Now we, which is a long-winded way of saying, he's 3D printed some new mounts yeah. for his aero bars, which uh, is quite impressive, really. I like the way he says that uh, I've ridden 200 kilometers with no issues. So that's going to be the end of that. Yes, and he's, he's also designed in a, a mechanism of failure that would be less catastrophic, which, uh, which I think is a very good plan, Evan, if you've yeah. got plastic. All right, pack. Yes, uh, and go careful. Um, right, next up, we've got this one from Paul Maron 77 He said, I was out for a spin and I saw this. Well, what is that, Paul? Gripping. Well, yeah, but what is it? I and don't even know. Why like, are they there? I mean, if they were the other way around, it would be sort of aero bar hack, wouldn't why it, at least? It? No, I don't understand that. No. Well, maybe someone can enlighten us as to why you might want to have two of these things attached to your hand. I don't even know what they're called. Well, it's a tool, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> yes. If you can enlighten us as to what's on the handlebars and then what they might be used for, that would be very good. Yeah. In the comment section down below. Uh, right, Michael Vello uh, saw this on a Facebook group. Don't know if it's a hack or a bodge. If it ain't stupid, if it works. Uh, well, that's a good use of a reflector. <laughs> I like that. Oh, it's almost a hack, actually, isn't it? Yeah, I think it does. I mean, the only problem is, obviously, your chain might come off the other side. Oh, yeah. So you kind of need some other sort of, I mean, most sort of chain, what are they called? Catchers kind yeah. of go over the top, don't they? So perhaps if you could fashion some kind of 3D printed thing. All right, that we're might saying be more hack. Bodge yeah. for the last one. Massive bodge, yeah. All uh, right, don't forget you can get involved in this through the GSIN app, or indeed, you can still use the uploader. There's a link to that in the description below. It's caption competition now, that point in the show where you get your chance to get your hands on a coveted GCN Elite water bottle. Ooh, which these are the new ones, looking kind of cool, aren't they? They do look nice, yeah. They do. Uh, all you've got to do uh, is give us a caption, a funny caption, to a photo that we're about to give you. Firstly though, results from last week. Yes, uh, last week's photo was this one uh, from the Saitama Criterion with a load of cyclists dressed in uh, judo outfits. Our winner this week is Y Kin Lee. Caption, preparations for the judo d'Italia. I like that. I, yeah, that put a smile on my face. I only got 10 likes, but I thought it deserved a lot more. Well, yeah, I mean, it's not like a laugh out loud thing. It's like, oh, I see what you did there. That's quite clever, isn't, isn't it? why you didn't just laugh out loud. Yeah, basically, um, unlike I've got a good feeling about this one. So this is this week's caption photo, uh, which was taken at Rood of Order at the weekend, yeah, I would that imagine. Is Ellie Isabet. Uh, we are is, going yeah. to start you off. How's your form? It's not bad. <laughs> no, seriously, that, I thought that was quite funny first time round. I genuinely did laugh out loud. Not second time round. Well, it's hard to sort of, <laughs> like, have natural laughter, isn't it? But, think, uh, oh, but That was visible, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, right, let us know your best captions in the comment section down below, and we'll pick a winner this time next week. And don't forget uh, why to get in contact with your address so that we can get that to you. That's right. It's that part of the show where you have an opportunity to win three months free subscription to Zwift. Uh, to put yourself in for a chance, all you need to do is ask us a training related question in the comments section down below using the hashtag AskGCNTraining. This week's winner is Cam, who says, How What's often. He <laughs> Sorry, I just realised there's no chance I'm going to be able to pronounce his name right, uh, but Cam, I can get right. Anyway, how often should I attempt an FTP test? I started a six-week FTP training programme on Zwift and have been logging my results and progress so far, but I don't really want to go through the suffering that comes with an FTP test every week. Should I wait until the programme is done before my next test? The short answer is yes, absolutely. Uh, I think you definitely wouldn't get any benefit from doing an FTP test each and every week. Firstly, because it's pretty demanding. Secondly, because it won't actually make you that much fitter and therefore you're using a day of training. And thirdly, I think it's one of those things where you can look a little bit too closely for a trend, can't you? If you like test- weight. Well, exactly. If you weigh yourself every day, then it, you get a bit bogged down, don't you? Whereas actually, if you test your FTP every six weeks or so, or every three months or so, then you get to see that nice trend, hopefully, mm. building over time, where you've, you've had 
had time to actually make those improvements that, that take a while to come, don't they, sometimes? Yeah, they do. I, I don't think I've ever heard of anybody doing an FTP test every single week, so you definitely don't need to do that. And if you do hate them, and plenty of people do, because they're really hard, aren't yeah. they? Uh, I think you need to only do them every three to four months, because there's an old saying in uh, Wattage Forum Circle <laughs> Oh my goodness! Training is testing, and testing is training. And what does that mean? Uh, well, basically, when you do a test, you are still training yourself, but you can measure your uh, training through, no, you can measure your testing through training. <laughs> uh, basically, what it means is that when you're using a power meter every single day, you can kind of see whether you're getting fitter because if the training that you prescribe yourself or that your coach prescribes you feels pretty easy and you're completing it without too many problems, it probably means that your FTP's gone up and you need to adjust it ever so slightly. Anyway, if you'd like to get yourself in with a chance of winning three months free subscription to Zwift, don't forget to get involved with a coaching or training related question in the comments below. Hashtag ask GCN training. Okay, time now for our favorite comments of the week that you have been leaving underneath our videos. Some brilliant ones from uh, Ollie and Jeremy. Well, first up, there were loads of really good ones underneath the show last week, but we thought we wouldn't read any of them out. Well, absolutely not. No way. Uh, yeah, under Ollie and Jeremy's cyclocross video, uh, Ollie runs like a drunk crab. Uh, <laughs> came in from, I did laugh at that. From yeah. Real Side Review, so he clearly would know. Right, so moving on to the Ted King Gravel Tips, which is a brilliant video with Jeremy. Oh, Howell. amazing. We had this comment from Linus Owens. Hey, this guy beat me at the Zbut Gravel, uh, which is a steamboat gravel, gravel yeah, uh, by five and a half hours. I don't really know why anyone thinks he's an expert. Uh, good point. He's <laughs> rather good, isn't he, Ted King? Yeah, uh, Gravel yeah. endurance races. Well, you also point out he rode for Cervelo testing. Well, then so you why? pointed out that he went through an entire 20 minute video without pointing out that he used to ride for the Cervelo <laughs> testing. Team. It's remarkable that some people can do that, isn't it? Uh, meanwhile, Rodney Eason wrote, perhaps a J Power and Ted versus Dan and Side venture in the future. Well, yeah, I mean, I don't know whether we'd stand a remote chance up against uh, no, Jay Powell and Ted. It would have to be a handicap race of some sort, wouldn't it? Yeah, or in the pub, perhaps. Yeah, well, we'd stand a chance we, then. Well, that's it. I could lead you out and then you'd finish off the job. Uh, right then, uh, underneath the uh, Top Cycling Mistakes video, which was another absolute belter from Chris and James, uh, Michael Lanetto said, dangers of fork-mounted roof rack. I once left my front wheel leaning on a tree in my driveway. Oh, man. But then he points out he did have his shoes. So uh, there we go. At least you could do uh, a wheelie. A clipped in wheelie. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. The uh, danger wheelie, as we sometimes <laughs> call them. Right then, coming up on the channel over the next seven days, on Wednesday, we're going to show you how to stay riding outdoors for the entire winter. So if you hate riding indoors, despite all the new technology that keeps it entertaining, uh, we've got some tips for you. On Thursday, we're going to give you the top 10 climbs of the professional cycling season in 2019. Oh. And on a Friday, uh, we're going to show you how to shoulder your bike in cyclocross, and it's Ollie that's going to teach you. <laughs> <laughs> Running like a drunk crab. Uh, no, uh, Jeremy, you'll be you'll be thankful uh, at the helm of that one. Uh, then on Saturday, we look at the weird world of British hill climb racing. Pretty cool that one. Uh, and then on Sunday, what happens when a pro cyclist goes bike packing? Hank got his first taste of overnight adventure. That is well worth a watch, so do make sure you check that one out. Also on Sunday over on GCN Racing, we have live coverage of the European Cyclocross Championships that you can watch if you're not in Europe, si, or ah. in Australia. I know that sounds slightly ironic, but if you are in Europe, you'll be able to catch that on Eurosport. But that's Van der Poel in action again, isn't it? it Presumably. Be, yeah. Ooh, good one. Uh, and then, of course, uh, Monday over on the Racing Channel, we have the Racing News Show. And then we'll be back next week with the GCN Show. Now we're getting on for the end of the GCN show, but there is still time for Extreme Corner. And just as well, because this week it's surfing. Yeah, everyone's been wondering what the surfing thing was in the intro, but well, now they're going to find out. Here you go. So No Pins have made a really cool little video where their ambassador, Andrew Cotton, who is a prolific a big wave surfer, shows how he uses cycling as rehabilitation from big wave surfing accidents, uh, which is what's coming right up. But if you want some more cycling, here's some more of Ollie falling off.
still find that funny. Yeah. Even now. Yeah. Good work, Ollie. Uh, right, that is all for this week's GCN show. Don't forget to help us with everything that we've asked you for in the comment section down below. You've got quite a long list, actually, haven't you? Yeah, you better start ticking it off. Bike laws, uh, shoe drying, hacks. Yeah. That was probably about it. The caption competition as well. Yeah. Anyway, we've Ask got GCN two... GCN training. <laughs> we've got two more videos that we can recommend to you now if you haven't already watched them. First up, uh, Sai and Nige did their recipe for riding snacks, which you can find just down here. And over here, you can find me presenting the Racing News Show. Yeah, and don't forget that those snacks are from the Plant-Based Cyclist book. Have we talked about that already today? Probably we have, haven't we? 